see that little DBA report. Okay, actually, what you guys are going to have to do, um, grab your iPads, and um, there's a worksheet that looks like this. So there's a worksheet on Moodle that's called Lab 1 or Capacitor Investigation. So pull that up and... and We'll kind of work through this. So I checked the details and I checked your papers to see when you shared it with me and it, when it was last modified. I don't know if everybody knows. Oh, last modified? Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, absolutely. Last yeah. modified. You can see when you're doing it. Well, I know that. Every time you make a change to a file, there's a, it goes into history. Okay. I usually don't do that for papers. So. Uh, but if you get it done before, it doesn't matter when yes. you share it. You just can't do it after it. Yeah. Okay. Here's, here's what I have while you guys are finishing pulling this up. We've got, um, well, let me just unattach it. We've got a multimeter that is electronic. So I've got, instead of using the Radio Shack one, like right here, I've got a Pasco electronic multimeter. And what it's gonna do, instead of reading out a single value, you know, like, when you connect something or you, you touch those two probes, it gives you a number. This is gonna do what? Instead of just giving me one number. It's gonna give me a graph. So if something happens really quick, and I all I would see is a flash of numbers, now I can actually see the plot of how the potential is changing. Potential's on the y-axis, my time on the x-axis. So I can see how potential changes, I can zoom in and see what's going on. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna connect the positive potential across this capacitor. I'm gonna connect the negative uh, probe across the negative side of the capacitor. And then I've got three one and a half volt batteries. So one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, approximately. They're a little bit run down. So instead of four and a half, maybe there's 4.3, 4.4 volts here. And so what I'm gonna do is I've got two leads that are connected to the capacitor as well, right here. And I'm going to connect these two leads on the capacitor to each other, or I'm sorry, not to each other, to the positive and negative end of the battery. 
And so now the capacitor should be charged up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch these two ends and we're going to watch what happens to the charge and the capacitor. Right now when I hit start, these two probes are going to start collecting data. Before I touch these two together, what would you expect this is going to look like when I hit the start button and the two probes here, the voltage probes, start to collect data? What's, going to, what's the graph going to look like? Right. I was going to say around 4.3. Okay, and what's it going to do? Straight, down, up. Before I, before I touch, I'm holding them like this. When I'm hit, I hit the start button, I'm holding them like this. Oh, it's it's, it's, it's going to read the potential across the two terminals of the capacitor. As I touch them, what's going to happen? Down. Quick, slow. It's going to be like a straight down. It's going to be like a take some time. Pretty, pretty straight. Let's see what happens. That oh. pretty quick down, right? Okay. <laughs> so it asks you in the first part of that. I've got to get my copy of that so I can see what you're looking at. Actually, I've got it up here. If uh, we're going to have a few conventions here, and I probably should have gone over these to start with. Um, we're going to indirectly measure the electric fields, and we're going to use the electric potential to do that. We can only get a qualitative field for uh, field for field strength. All right, we don't aren't going to be able to say what size the field is. When we measure changes in potential, we're always going to use our red probe as the leading probe. You'll see what I mean when we start measuring potential across different points in the wires. The red probe is always going to be. Um, We'll talk about it when we get there. You'll see what it means. Um, a positive voltmeter reading indicates an increase in potential. That's obvious. A decrease in potential would be negative between the two probes. A positive voltmeter reading indicates that a field exists that's directed from the red probe to the black probe. And vice versa. So the charge capacitor, we just did this first one, and we saw from A to B, the potential difference from A to B was four point, what was it? Three, about? Just below 4.5, I call it 4.3, okay? We can turn the next one. I keep trying to touch the board. So point one, two, four point three. So from A to B, you can put in four point three on that. Now what I'm going to do is before I, I kind of jumped ahead in this because what we really want to do right now, I'm going to recharge these again. So now they're back up to four and a half volts because I just connected them to the battery again. So the capacitor is back up to 4.3 volts. And now we're going to use this guy right here. And I've got it set to millivolts. Okay. So you guys can uh, make sure I have someone else do this. So Ryan, come on. How's your knee? All right. You want to stand up or no? Okay, all right, so take those. We are gonna find the potential drop from B to C. Now notice the way it's written, B to C. C is the further one out, that's, you're leading with the red one. So C, as I disconnect this, put the red probe on this, and then put the black probe at point B. Where would that be? Where would point B be? And, oh. And the reading, negative 0.1 millivolt. It's going to go back and forth because it's so small. Zero them out one more time. Negative 0.1 millivolt. 
negative 0.1 millivolts. Okay, that means there's a potential drop from B to C, a loss of potential. We'll talk about why that is, all right? Let's go from C to D. And now again, the red is the leading um, probe. So the red one's gonna be at D and the negative one is gonna be at C. <coughs> so there's B. So, so he's got negative four point what? Negative four point four from C to D. Okay. So the positive probe is at D, the negative probe is at C, and you get a negative four point four across there. Should lose his charge a little bit. Not by much though. Like point oh one volts. Right. All right. Now we're going to go from what? B to A, so this is going to be at A. Make sure I don't know time. This is going to be really hard to read again, like the last one. Negative point one millivolts. So from D to A, negative point one millivolts. So a potential drop from D to A. Mr. Burns, so yeah. this is a problem from like our test we saw. Mm -hmm. So there's like two thousand volts of energy. Is that like a normal? Um, when you think about power in a circuit, it's not just about potential difference. It's about how much current, how many electrons are moving through. Okay. So that. Vandegraaff generator can probably get up to 300 or 350 volts, right. but it's very, very low current, so it doesn't hurt you. If you had 300 volts with a, with a lot of current, that's a lot of power that you'll learn about in the circuit unit. It's the power that's going to hurt you, you know, the amount of current that's flowing through you. So it's the potential plus the current. Okay. If take, and I don't mean literally so plus, like, you mean those are the two factors. So like battery voltage is different from like... It's not different. Potential is potential. It's just how much power is in this battery, and that involves how much charge it can move at that potential. Okay. We'll get into that. All right, so in which segments, now you have to answer this part. We have a few minutes left. Um, in which segments do you find evidence of a field? How do the fields compare in strength and direction? I will refer you back up to, I'm gonna let you answer this in the last few minutes here because you need to look back up here. A positive voltmeter reading indicates that a field exists that is directed, boom, and vice versa. So you've had a, one of these had a positive potential difference when you went from A to B, we had a positive potential difference. From B to C, you had a negative, really tiny one. From C to D, you had a negative, big potential drop. And then from D to A, you had a small negative. So you have to decide in which direction the field exists. You have to also decide the relative strength of the field in those four places. When you mean direction, or what do you mean by big strength? Which way does it point? The field vector points in this direction. Refer to this if you need to. Okay. You can talk it over. My clock is slow back there. All right, we'll pick this up on Monday. All right. You do not have to finish it. There is a reading assignment, though, you have to do.